What's going on YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made a really inexpensive exposure unit that can compete with the most expensive ones in the market. Let's check it out. All right, so what I have here is my homemade exposure unit. It took me a few hours to make, but well worth the time, well worth the money. It wasn't that expensive to do. The measurements are 24 by 20 by 13. So this was done with one sheet of MDF board with the white laminate over it. The reason I chose the MDF with the white laminate over it is because it has more uh, reflection in the actual exposure. Um, that white reflects, it's gonna go only one way. It's not gonna absorb the light. That white's gonna reflect uh, the light to the screen itself, so you get a much better exposure. That small block of MDF I drilled in, I just used it as handles. So the trick to building a really good exposure unit is there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot of variables that go into it it's not just one thing it's not just i need the light i need a piece of glass let's go because if you're familiar with uh, the hobby kits and um, the upstart screen printing kits they come with one halogen light they might come with a small piece of glass and the halogen light what they're going to tell you to do is to put that halogen light over your screen with your image put the piece of glass on top now that rarely works i mean it, it does work but it takes a lot longer and it's not really true what i mean by that it's not going to get you a great exposure sometimes you're going to have blowout or there's going to be parts of your image that um that underexposed overexposed just because you have one halogen light hitting the middle and then the light kind of spreads out so i mean you're going to have a lot of trial and error doing that uh, so that's just really not recommended. So I cut this using my circular saw so that the cuts aren't uh, exact dead on straight. So what I did for the top of the unit in order to not have the screens wobbling because the cuts aren't perfectly straight is I took a screen frame, a 20 by 24, an old one that I had that I had uh, the mesh ripped out in and I just completely cut out that mesh and put it on top of the unit, screwed it in. So this way, when I go to expose, I put my frame and match it up perfectly on top of this old frame. So I know I'm gonna get a good print. I'm not gonna have anything wobbling. It's gonna be uh, perfectly level and uh, I'm not gonna have uh, any issues. In addition to putting the, the frame on there, I added a piece of glass that I found at Goodwill this piece of glass here, it looks to be from an old stereo cabinet. You know the big old stereo cabinets? It was only like two bucks, so couldn't beat that. I also have an extra piece of glass just in case something happens to this one, which I also found at Goodwill. Now don't get me wrong, you can go to the hardware store, you can go to Lowe's, wherever it is, and they'll cut you a piece of glass. The reason you don't want to do that, the first thing is it's more expensive. Another thing is, it might not be tempered. You need that tempered glass because you're gonna be putting all that weight on there and you don't want that glass to shatter. Third reason is they're gonna sell you that piece of glass like a window pane. So all the edges are gonna be sharp. Everything's gonna be sharp and you're either gonna cut your screen, you're gonna cut yourself and it's just a safety issue, right? So finding these, these pieces of glass at Goodwill, at the thrift shop, at a yard sale, they're made for a table or they're made for uh, some type of cabinet and they're going to be beveled on the side so you're not going to have any issues with cutting yourself you're not going to have any issues with the screen getting cut and for the most part those pieces of glass are going to be tempered plus they're a few bucks versus 40 50 bucks for that piece of glass at the hardware store so let's talk about wiring when i started this process my goal was to put everything nice and neat braid the wires, get everything all spliced up, make a junction box, run everything through there, make it look nice and also functional. But when I started getting into it, I said, screw that. I'm gonna make it easy. I'm gonna drill a hole through the back of the unit, run all the outlets through there. And what I did was put all the outlets on a power strip. At first, I was plugging that power strip into an outlet. But what I found out was when I would go to turn on the unit, it would start tripping. So to fix that, what I did was run that power strip to another power strip. And from that power strip, 
I ran it to the outlet, to the wall. So to turn it on and off, all I have to do is turn on and off that power strip. Works every time. So if you're seeing this video and saying, ah, you know what, I don't want to go through all that mess. I just want to get one out the box ready to use. Please check out the links in my description or check out my Amazon store. There's a few different exposure units that I'd recommend on sale right now from Amazon. So again, when I built this, there was a lot of trial and error. When I started with this unit, I just started with three halogen lights and I used the original 500 watt bulbs in them. So what I did was strip line them up in the center. So what was happening when I was going to expose is all the sides of the image were washing out. The center was getting exposed, but the sides of the image were getting washed out. So from there, I went to four halogen lights, one on each corner. And I was kind of having that same issue. There were parts that were getting exposed that parts that weren't getting exposed. Plus it started getting so hot that the timing, I really had to be precise on the timing uh, to get a good exposure. So that just didn't work. So what I ended up doing was six halogen lights, two rows of three. And right away, I knew that was gonna be way too hot to get any type of good exposure. So what I went ahead and had to do was take out the original 500 watt halogen lights that they came with, and I had to replace them with 300 watt bulbs. When I did that, it changed the game for me. Everything just started exposing like butter. It was night and day. I'm able to expose half tones. I'm able to expose CMYK. It's perfect. So with your own build, you're gonna spend a fraction of what you're gonna spend buying a brand new one that's not gonna be as efficient as this one. So let me show you exactly how I expose. So this screen is already exposed, but I'm just gonna show you for demonstrative purposes. So you're gonna take a piece of cardboard. The reason this is really important is because you want that mesh smashed up right against that glass. Have a piece of MDF board that I put on top of that cardboard to make sure you get a good firm pressure. So to top it off, I have a 25 pound weight that's gonna go on top of that MDF just to compress everything and make sure I get a good exposure. This is gonna mimic a vacuum exposure unit. If you've ever priced vacuum exposure units, you know those are some of the best out there and they're gonna run upwards of $1,000. So side note, if you already have an exposure unit and are not doing this, this is something you need to start doing, you're gonna notice a dramatic increase in your productivity and your exposure just by doing this. So I have a friend who has this big vacuum exposure unit that can expose automatic and manual frames, automatic or the bigger frames. And it also runs on UV light. And he's bragging to me that it can expose the screen in 10 seconds. UV light is a trend right now, which is great for an upgrade. But if you're a start out screen printer or somebody that just needs a good exposure unit, halogen has never failed me. Plus it's a lot cheaper than a UV. So 10 seconds versus two minutes. I'll take the two minutes and save a thousand bucks any day. If you did find this helpful, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out all my other screen print videos. Click the link in my description for screen print supplies on sale right now from Amazon and check you on the next one. So in the time I was editing this video, I had gone to Goodwill and I found this big piece of glass and I just recorded it and I recorded it just to show you that there's always glass readily available at Goodwill. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to find these pieces of glass.